Hi there, welcome to this new build series. And in this series, we're going to be building a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now, if you haven't heard of the quiver, essentially it's a kind of roundabout half scale of the very popular vintage model, the Quaker or the Flying Quaker. Now the Flying Quaker came out in 1936, uh, essentially a free flight model, but it's a very, very popular model. And this is a simple scaled down version of that. As I said, it's got a 45 inch wingspan. Now we're going to be using a great set of plans that I downloaded from the Outer Zone website. And if you have a look in the description below this video, you'll find a link where you can download these plans. Now these plans are great, there's lots of information, everything that we need to build a really great flying model. Now we've got the wing ribs here, we've got the wings, tail plane, fin and rudder, it's all there. Now, to power this model, we're going to be using a Mills 1.3 diesel engine. Now using a 1.3 Mills diesel engine is an interesting choice for this model because when we look at the plans, just under the title here, you probably can't read it because it's quite small, but it says to use a 0.75cc Mills replica. So the engine that I'm proposing is quite a bit, well not, it's, yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. So why am I going to use that engine and will it be okay? Well, there are two basic reasons. The first one is that a friend of mine has this exact model, lovely tissue model that flies great. He has got a 0.75 Mills replica, it's one of the Irvine uh, replicas, in his plane. And to be honest, it's a little bit underpowered, particularly if there's a breeze. Uh, it flies lovely, but it could really benefit from just a little bit more power. So that's my reason for putting a slightly more powerful air engine in, or the one reason. The second reason is that my 1.3cc Mills, I don't think is particularly powerful. It's the only Mills I've had, so I don't know how it compares to other engines of the same size. But I had it in a Tomboy Senior 49 inch wingspan, so only a little bit bigger than this, and it kind of struggled a little bit to, uh, to, to really make headway, particularly if there was a breeze. So I think that it will do ideal in a slightly smaller model. So that's my reasons. There are some uh, adaptations we're going to have to do at the front just to make the engine bearers slightly wider, but it's a really simple uh, fix. So what we can do now is we can take a look at the engine that I'm going to use. Now, as I said, this is an original uh, 1.3 mils from uh, the 1950s, and it runs absolutely beautiful, really does run nice, and it starts easy. They're not hugely powerful engines, but they sound lovely, and uh, they are just a joy to run. Now, as I said, it's all original except for the, um, the tank, the, both the bottom piece and the lid to the tank is a, a replacement and um, we're going to use this tank in our model. If we turn it over we can see that side. I mean these are absolutely iconic engines and they look so lovely in a model. I can't wait to get this uh, in this uh, this quiver. I mean I was when I had this in my Tomboy Senior I was really disappointed when I had to take it out because it just hadn't got enough, uh, enough power because it did look and sound lovely. Now, as I said, these really are a great set of plans with all the information we need, but I am going to make just a few, three changes, I think, to the plans. The one I've already mentioned is that we just need to widen out those beach engine bearers, which means we need to alter the front very slightly but it will still look exactly the same as it is on the plans. You won't notice it when it's done. So, and we'll deal with that when we come to it. Now the other modification I'm going to do relates to the wing tips and the tips to the other um, control surfaces. 
Now we can see here on the plan the wing tip, the tips to the tailplane and the fin and rudder assembly. They're shown on the plan as being 316 reed that is wet, bent around into shape and then dried. Well reed is quite difficult to get, it's quite expensive and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to laminate these structures. All of these, one, two, three, four, five, five structures. And I think that will make us a nice, thin, strong, light structure. And a good replacement for the reed. And actually, I really like laminating, so it's kind of something I want to do anyway. Now the other, uh, the, uh, the only other change I'm going to make is in relation to the wing tips. On the original Quaker or the Flying Quaker and the other variations of the Quaker that came out around the late 1930s, early 1940s, they all had a wing tip that, or a wing that was completely flat on the top and the lower surface of the wing would curve up, come up at the tips to meet the uh, the top of the wing. So the wing tip on the top was totally flat. Now on this it's the opposite. It's a flat underside to the wing and the top of the wing comes along and then at the tip slopes down. Now it doesn't really matter I don't think which you do. I think as far as from a flying point of view and a looks point of view it's fine whatever you choose but I just think that having the flat top to the wing and the underside sloping up is much more of the vintage Quaker look and that's what I want to do so I'm just going to do a slight change here at the end of the day it will make very little difference to the build it will probably make it a little bit more awkward setting out those wing tips but more of a challenge more fun let's do it like the original Quaker now to my mind there is only one thing that I want to cover this in and that is tissue. It's a, it's a lovely vintage model, well it's, a, it's an adaptation of a lovely vintage model because these plans are, are, relatively, uh, are relatively recent but it is a scaled down Quaker from the 1930s so I'm going to cover it in tissue. Now I'm also going to be covering it in laminating film with tissue on the top. Now the reason I'm going to do that, even though it involves a little bit more work, is because we get a much stronger, much more resilient finish. Now I've got the wing here from my Diamond Demon, which was my last build. Hopefully you've seen the build series for that. If you haven't, have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to the build series or to the playlist for all the videos. But you can see it gives an absolutely gorgeous uh, finish. This is Japanese Asuka tissue which I'm going to be using on the uh, quiver and this is also laminating film that is then covered with the tissue. So I'm going to be using a, exactly the same technique as this because it's it, to me it just looks so good and I think I'm going to be doing it completely red on the underside and maybe a little bit of red on the front, maybe scalloped like the original Quaker and, um, and then just a white tissue. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we come to it because that will probably change. But you know, if you want to cover, if you're building this, you want to cover it in film, uh, heat shrink film, then do that. It's, it's durable, it's strong, easily cleaned. At the end of the day, you know, we build the models for us, for ourselves, and so we need to cover them in whatever we think we want to do and is appropriate for us. But for me, tissue and laminating film, and uh, it'll be a way down the road, but I can't wait to get on and do that. Now, we're going to try and build this nice and light so it flies really, really sweet. And I think there's no reason we can't do that. We've got the mills up front, which is only about 100 grams, and that includes the integral fuel tanks. There's no additional weight of the fuel tank. I think it's about 113, 15 grams, something like that. We've got radio control equipment to go in, but this model is essentially radio assist. It's two channel. So we've got the elevator and we've got the rudder. Now, the rudder 
is essentially this is going to be flying like a free flight model. So we're going to fly it up on the fuel we've got to get as much altitude as possible and then we're going to glide it back down. It's going to be like free fly but we're going to use the rudder to make sure we keep it within the bounds of the airfield so we don't lose it. So that's the rudder, the elevator. We probably won't use while it's flying, the main part of the flight. It's probably only going to be used when we come into land just to give a little bit of flare, just to make that landing a little bit softer. So the radio equipment we're going to keep as light as possible. We're probably going to use micro servos, four and a half or maybe slightly bigger eight and a half gram servos. And there's only going to be two of them, so that's very little weight. We're going to use carbon fibre, I think, for the control rods. And I've got a FlySky, one of their light receivers, which I think is only about eight and a half grams. And we'll choose AAA uh, N-loop Panasonic batteries for the power, pa pa power pack. So keeping everything as light as possible. Now in this video, I'm not going to be doing any building in this video, that's going to be in the next video I'll start building and I'll probably start on the fuselage but I'm not sure yet. But in this video I'm just going to be working on the wing ribs, I just want to, to get those ready. I really like making wing ribs. So. On the plan we've got the wing ribs shown here and what I've done is I've printed that out and I've stuck those patterns onto some 3mm uh, plywood and I've got them here. This one I've essentially uh, sanded to shape. This one uh, which is for the terminal uh, rib I haven't done yet. Uh, I still need to do that. Now the rib this rib here, I think I need to make 22 ribs identical to that for the wing. But if you notice on this, I don't know whether you can see that, I've added a little bit of balsa on the back there, I had to glue a bit on. Because after I'd made this, I noticed, I realised, and I always say don't trust the plans, and yet I often fall into the trap of trusting the plans. I trusted these, without thinking about it, I made this pattern and then realised that actually, if you put these on the plan, they don't, um, they're not long enough. These ribs are shown about uh, four, five mil. Uh, these ribs are shorter than they need to be to build a wing of that size. So essentially we had two choices. We either follow the ribs and make the cords slightly less, or we follow the wing and we lengthen the ribs on this, uh, pla on this uh, template, that's the word I was after. So I've decided to go with the wing. Long story short, I've had to make these slightly longer so that they actually fit the, uh, the, the wing on the plan. And that's what I'm going to do, so I've stuck a bit on. Now, what I'm doing, and I've already made a start doing this, is I've started to trace uh, or, or cut around this plywood template just to make these uh, rough formers and I'm going to bolt all this together with another uh, copy of this um, plywood template and we're going to make a sandwich so we've got two plywood templates of this rib and we've got all of these rough formers in between and we're going to sand them and fi file them and uh, plane them to shape so we get a lovely smooth sandwich and that's what I'm going to do now so I will get on and do that and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the balsa sandwich when it's done. Right well I've now got my rib sandwich which I've just finished and I've used a sanding stick just to profile those pieces of balsa between the, uh, the plywood templates and I've got 22 ribs of 116 medium balsa between here now and I think I said earlier this extra piece I put on to extend these ribs was uh, balsa but it's not it's a piece of plywood I stuck on balsa would just get sanded down uh, the piece on this side just fell off just as I was finishing sanding them which is fine because they're all nicely shaped now so I'm not going to bother putting that back on but these are tightly bolted together while I do that profiling. 
Now there's, I said there's 22 ribs uh, between here and the profile I used is for the bulk of the ribs, the 20 ribs in the main part of the wing. There are two central ribs that don't have these bottom uh, slots cut in. So we will take out two ribs when we cut all of the slots and then we will, uh, we'll, well, we'll make sure that there are two ribs that haven't got those two slots. So great to get those done and I can't wait to start building the wing. And you can see we've got the nice, nice bird mouth in there. So they're all really consistent and identical ribs and we should get a really nice wing out of that. I've still got the terminal rib to do. I'm just gonna sand that up and I'll just put that on a piece of 116 balsa and run around with a, a scalpel to uh, to get that uh, those two ribs cut out and I will probably cut them a little bit too long you can see there's a curve in the front there not a a, um, a bird mouth and that's just where it's supposed to meet the, uh, the the 316 reed which we're not using so I'll leave those long for now and once we've got the rib uh, the, the wing laid out we'll cut this rib to size well it's great to get these ribs done and as I said I really enjoy this process uh, of sandwiching balsa together and sanding it and getting this lovely rib profile with all those ribs between it. It's, it's just, I just find it really rewarding. But anyway, enough of that. The next job we need to do now is to start actually building. But that's going to be the focus of the next video. So I'm going to draw this video to a close now so that it's not too long. And I think in the next video, I'm going to probably start on the fuselage and get that fuselage pulled together before we start the wings. Because I think it'd be better to make sure that the wings fit on the, on the fuselage that we've already got built. So anyway, thanks very much for, for watching and um, I hope you found this interesting. I think this is going to be a great build and, and a, quite a nice simple build that will produce a really great looking model. So anyway, I'm going to spend a bit of time now just pulling together the bits I need for the fuselage and I hope you'll come back and, uh, and join me in building the fuselage for this lovely 45 inch quiver. <laughs>